In this video, I'm going to get an LED blinking on an evaluation board using Crossworks version 3. I hope that by the end of this tutorial, you'll have an insight into Crossworks basics. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need to have Crossworks for ARM installed and activated. A 30-day free trial can be downloaded from our website, www.rowley.co.uk, where you'll find videos and details about the download and activation process. For this tutorial, you'll also need to have an evaluation board on hand. I've decided to use the Nuclear F030R8 evaluation board from ST Microelectronics. This tutorial will, however, be relevant for any evaluation board currently supported by Crossworks for ARM. For a complete list of supported boards, please visit the website link shown now. OK, let's take a quick look at the board I'm using. This version of the Nuclear board uses the STM32 F030R8 microcontroller based on an ARM Cortex M0 architecture. It has both Arduino and ST Morpho connected pinouts with headers through both top and bottom of the board. It has two push buttons, one user and one reset. Also usefully, for the purposes of this tutorial, it has a user LED, LD2, here. Above the main board is the onboard ST-Link V2 debugger, which is on a break-off tab. A handy feature of this particular debugger is that it has a standalone mode to enable debug of other STM32-based microcontrollers. The ST-Link itself has a USB mini port, which can be used to power the Nucleo board from your development machine. It is also possible to power the board using an external supply via the pinout. If you have not used the ST-Link V2 debugger before, you will need to install a drive to run it. This is available from www.st.com or search for ST-Link USB driver in your favourite website search engine. Now we can start working with Cross Studio, the Crossworks IDE. On opening for the first time, you will be directed to the Welcome Perspective view. This is an overview of the current status of Cross Studio. The screen is separated into six boxes. Tasks summarises matters that require attention, as in our case, missing support packages. I will come back to this shortly. The Software Updates window lists any available software updates available for Crossworks or currently installed packages. News is a link to any RSS or Atom feeds you have subscribed to. Projects contains shortcuts to new or recently opened projects. Finally, we have links, which, as the name suggests, are a handy set of links to your favourite websites. The perspective can be changed at any time to suit your current work by using the drop down menu at the top right of the screen. To download support packages, you can either click this link in Tasks, or choose Tools, Packages, Install Packages. I'm going to use the Tools menu in this instance. Support packages are a single compressed file that can contain project templates, system files, example projects and documentation for a particular target. The idea being to get you up and running very quickly. We also provide a generic ARM CPU support package, which can be used to target real hardware for devices that don't currently have available support. However, it is highly likely that you will need to modify memory map files, startup code, reset scripts, and the loader program in order to support the target. This is outside the scope of this tutorial. Should you wish to do this, have a look at the documentation included in the generic ARM CPU support package for more information. There happens to be a board support package for the Nucleo F030R8, which I will now search for. To find relevant packages, you can either simply scroll through all the manufacturers listed and spot the package you need, or use the search box in the top left corner. To save wear and tear on my mouse wheel, I'm going to try a few letters from my board's name in the search box. Here we are. Double click on the desired package and note that the action status changes to install. Go to the bottom of the screen and click next. Crossworks will bring up a summary of the packages that need to be installed. This may include a number of items that your selected packages are dependent on. Click Next to download the required files. Once the download is complete, click the Finish button. To view the currently installed packages, go to Tools, Show Installed Packages. In this view, you can find a wealth of information about each of the installed packages by clicking on the links you see here to the left. For now, we are interested in the package ST Nucleo F030R8 board support package, here. 
Clicking on this link reveals the package documentation at the top and solution files here in the bottom section. Let's jump straight into a project by clicking on the ST Microelectronics ST Nucleo F030R8 sample solution. On opening, we get our first look at Cross Studio in standard editing mode. Clicking the little arrows to the top right of the screen reveals a shortcuts ribbon. This contains shortcuts to some of the more regularly used buttons. All of the windows you can see can be moved, undocked or swapped with other windows by dragging and dropping with the mouse. Crossworks remembers how you set up each perspective and will reload this setup when next opened. If you do get into a tangle with your window layout, it can be reset to default by selecting Window, Reset Window Layout from the top toolbar. In the standard perspective view, we can see the dashboard mentioned earlier, the Project Explorer, Targets and Properties windows. I'll give you a little explanation on each as we use them. First things first, let's get the evaluation board connected. Ensure that your evaluation board is connected to your machine via the micro USB cable and go to the targets window. Highlighted at the top of the list are the favourite targets. These can be changed by clicking the star symbol to the left. Otherwise, targets appear in alphabetical order. Double click on the target required. In my case, it is the ST-Link V2. On connecting the ST-Link, you'll notice a number of changes to the Cross Studio display. We now have an output window this window contains logs and transcripts from the various systems within Cross Studio. Errors, successes and warnings are reported here. It is worth keeping an eye on this window whilst carrying out tasks like connecting to a target or compiling your code. Another useful indicator to keep an eye on is at the bottom right of the title bar. This shows the current status of your project. We have the status light for the target connection. White indicates no target connected. Yellow, target is connected. Solid green, target is free running, not under control of the debugger. Flashing green, target is running under the control of the debugger. Solid red, target is stopped at a breakpoint or because execution is paused. And finally, flashing red. Crossworks is programming the application into the target. If all is well, connected appears next to the target description. The output window will display that connecting to your chosen target is completed. A yellow target connected will be displayed in the bottom right status bar. If you're using a nuclear evaluation board, you will also see that LED LD1 goes from solid red to flashing green red, indicating that it is connected to your machine. Great, so far so good. We can now move on to programming the target. The Project Explorer is the user interface of the Crossworks project system. It organizes your project files and provides access to the commands that operate on them. A toolbar at the top of the window offers quick access to commonly used commands for the selected project node or the active project. Project nodes can be selected by clicking them in the Project Explorer. Additionally, as you switch between files in the editor, the selection in the Project Explorer changes to highlight the file you're editing. Right click to reveal a shortcut menu with a larger set of commands that will work on the selected project node, ignoring the active project. The selected project node determines what operations you can perform. For example, if a single file is selected, the compile operation will compile a single file. If a folder project node is selected, each of the files in the folder will be compiled. I'm going to double click on the project LED node. This makes it the active project. Clicking on the little triangle to the left of the project node expands to reveal the associated project folders and files. Note that this does not represent the organization of files in your machine's file system. It is simply a way of logically representing files for the purposes of development. I'm going to expand the source files, then double click on the led.c file, which opens the Cross Studio text editor. The text editor itself is highly customizable, as are many other elements of Cross Studio. Cross Studio options can be accessed by using Tools, Options from the top menu, or by using keyboard shortcut Alt plus comma. Here you can change many options which are grouped together on tabs. There is also a handy search box at the top, which will help you find specific properties. Holding Ctrl plus forward and back with a mouse wheel will zoom the text editor. Clicking the disk icon will save the zoom as a default setting next time Cross Studio is opened. We can see here that we have a basic C LED blinking program. The program consists of a couple of functions, cycle and delay. There is also a header file called ctl underscore api dot h, which brings in the Crossworks tasking library. There are lots of options for compiling and building code found in the build menu. 
As you can see we can build anything from the individual C files through to the entire solution. As it's the one I'm interested in at the moment I think I will just compile the LED project. Let's check this code compiles correctly. Select build LED or F7 if you have project LED as your active project. Great, all looks good. The output window reports complete. Any warnings or errors are shown in orange or red. For a more detailed view of what is happening, the task dropdown can be changed to output. Looking in our project explorer window now, we should be able to find the output files generated during compilation. We are now ready to flash the target. Check that you are still connected to your target, then click on the large green arrow button, go from the debug menu or simply hit F5. Watch the output window as the target is flashed. After flashing, Cross Studio changes to debug perspective and by default stops program execution at the start of the main function. We now see windows suitable for debugging our project. To the left is the disassembly view. We also have the call start window, locals and registers. The output window now has the ability to switch between output, memory and debug terminal. To continue execution of our program, click on the continue arrow. Go from the debug menu or simply hit F5. If the program is running correctly, we should be able to see the user enabled LD2 LED on our evaluation board flashing away. We can pause or stop the execution of the program at any time by clicking on the brake button or choosing brake from the debug menu or using the key combination control plus period. This has been a very quick introductory video. I hope it has given you enough insight to get you up and running with your first projects with Crossworks. For more detailed information and helpful links, please go to the help button from within Cross Studio here or visit our website www.rowley.co.uk where you'll find links to our community forum, support desk and other videos.